So the Met Office has issued a series of weather warnings with Storm Frank expected to bring strong winds and up to six inches of rainfall. Well, Professor David Barnforth is a flooding expert and former president of the Institution of Civil Engineers. He joins us now from Risborough in Buckinghamshire. Uh, thanks very much indeed for joining us, Professor Barnforth. I'm just going to uh, introduce a line. We just heard the news uh, from North Yorkshire, from Tadcaster today, that the bridge there, we've heard in the last few minutes, has collapsed. This is... Um, Tadcaster is between York and Leeds, and this is uh, the bridge over the River Wharf, which had burst its banks and those rains um, around Boxing Day. Uh, so a, a reminder, Professor Balmforth, of the, the level of damage that can be done by the floods that we've been experiencing. Yes, indeed. I mean, events like this do occur. We do get bridges collapsing in extreme flood events like the ones we've seen in recent days. And it's a reminder to us just how vulnerable our communities are to flood water and why we need to take these events so seriously. Well, that's right. And nationally, to what extent would you say that our flood defences are falling short? Just how inadequate do you think they are? I think the key challenge for us is that the sorts of events that we've seen over the past week or so are going to be typical of the sorts of events we see in the future as the effects of climate change become more apparent. And we certainly need to be investing more in flood defences in the future than we've done in the past. And we also need to be in investing in the communities themselves as well as that. Well, yes, the government has said that it's committed to invest £2.3 billion in flood risk management. Is that enough then? I think where, where we're missing out is in not helping communities to prepare for flooding, in not helping them to flood proof their homes and businesses, and in particular in not protecting critical infrastructure from flooding. So, uh, so what steps need to be taken in that area then? Well, we, we've improved enormously in recent years on, on forecasting floods. The, the Met Office and the Environment Agency work very well together to predict when floods are going to occur. But those predictions aren't often communicated well within the communities. And householders don't understand what risk they face. They're not able to prepare their homes and flood-proof their homes more effectively. Businesses become vulnerable to flood water when they don't necessarily have to be so vulnerable. And um, in particular, we have a lot of outages of electricity and other key infrastructure components, which really could be protected much better from flooding. So are you saying that we should put this emphasis on protecting homes because you think that it's inevitable that more floods will come? Is it not possible to upgrade our conventional flood defences to prevent this kind of flooding? It's not possible to prevent every flooding in every community for every conceivable event in the future. We have to face the fact that there will continue to be floods in the places where we live and work. And that's why we must make those communities much more resilient to protect them from the effects of that flood water in a way that is not apparent at the moment. And to what extent do we need this broader rethink to cover other areas? Do we need to look at the way that we manage our rivers? Do we look, need to look at where we build our homes? How broad a rethink do you think is needed? We certainly look, need to look carefully at where we put new homes. And if we put new homes in flood risk areas, then we should ad adopt special measures in those homes to make them resilient to flooding. At the moment, our homes are built of uh, materials which are particularly susceptible to flood water, timber materials and plaster materials, and the sorts of electrical installations which we use make those homes and businesses very uh, susceptible to flood water. They're easily damaged and they take a long time to dry out and recover afterwards, and that is avoidable. OK, well, Professor Balmforth, uh, very interesting to get your views here this evening. Thank you for that. Um, and as I was just introducing uh, Professor Balmforth there, I mentioned this news that uh, part of this uh, very old bridge, this ancient bridge in the centre of Tadcaster in North Yorkshire, has indeed collapsed into the River Wharf. You can see there some of those moving pictures that we've just got in of that happening. Uh, the road was closed. It has been closed uh, because of worries about the structural safety of that bridge. Um, but obviously now there are severe, a great deal of repairs that need to be done so that this uh, village can be 
stopped from being cut in two in a sense so that um, big chunk of bridge falling into the water there happened just before five o'clock so nearly an hour ago now so uh, an ancient bridge in the center of tadcaster in north yorkshire there collapsing into the river wharf